So, I just finished playing the demo for Romance in Saga 2 Revenge of the Seven, a classical turn-based RPG which seems to have everything old school gamers could possibly want and even a little bit more. It comes out on the 24th this month, so October, on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Switch and of course PC. If you are a fan of the Dragon Quest games or the old school Final Fantasy games, you're going to want to get this and I'll tell you all about its many smexy features. You will especially want this game if, like me, you fell in complete and utter love with Dragon Quest XI. I boldly made the claim it was the best modern RPG I have ever played in my video review of that. So you can imagine how much Romance in Saga 2 has impressed me to even make this comparison. Alrighty, enough with the intro. Time to crank up the fanboy energy to 100, and keep in mind I am a complete and utter noob to the Saga franchise. I know nothing! So this is a fresh perspective, and if fans want to chuck in some extra knowledge down below in the comment section, go for it, but obviously be respectful. So, let's go over how you play this game, and it will become immediately obvious why I make the comparisons to Dragon Quest. You run around in a fully 3D world, controlling your main character. It's an RPG, so expect the ability to talk to people, explore your environment, find hidden treasure chests and items, buy and sell items at shops, equip the best gear, and kill the baddies to get the XP points to level up and become more powerful. Running around, you will see the enemies walking about the environment and combat only starts if you bump into them. This is great for a number of reasons. Stops the environments feeling empty, as you can see all these colorful monsters all about the place, and gives you the choice to engage in combat or see if you can sneak past. It also rewards any players who sneak up on enemies with bonus damage done to them if you strike them before the fight starts. In combat, everything starts very familiar to any fans of turn-based games. You attack the enemy with all your party members as the enemy stand there like suckers and embrace your rage, only to also have to stand there like flogs and let you hit them back until one side is defeated. I actually love turn-based games, even if I'm poking a bit of fun here. You have battle points, which is basically your mana to do special moves, and the cost depends on the move and how much damage it does. Okay, let's start talking about the cool things, which may or may not be new to the series, but it's the first time for me, and I think it made the combat extremely fun, and just very clever design, frankly speaking. So, each party member on your team can equip two different weapons, and each has their own moves attached, meaning you can attack with your spear at the start, and then follow through with your sword on your next turn, which is very smart, as it's not just your characters that level up, but their skills with specific weapons. So, if you use your spear a lot, that will level up and become more powerful, but if you neglect your sword because of your spear love affair, your sword attacks won't get stronger. This means the game encourages variety in your combat strategy from the very start. And this even applies to your magic abilities. So you can't just simply stick to the one powerful attack you have and ignore everything else your character can do. Well, you can, but I suspect you will regret it greatly later on. This approach actually reminds me of the Elder Scrolls games, where if you want your fireball to get more powerful, you just gotta keep using it, and I did literally see my fireball in this game get stronger during the demo because I kept using it. This smart design does not stop here though, as there is a feature called Glimmering Techniques, and that is while mixing up your attacks in battle, party members can learn a new move randomly and on the spot. So by not experimenting and mixing things up, you actually stop your members from getting new moves <laughs> that I can promise you are a lot stronger than the default ones. Once you do a glimmer move, it becomes a permanent move you can use going forward in all other battles as well. A light bulb appears beside the move to let you know of the chance of unlocking a glimmer move 
and if it's especially bright, you have an even better chance of unlocking it. So that keeps you hungry, keeps you reusing certain moves, trying to unlock what the next iteration is. The UI is also very friendly with helping you keep track of what attacks are effective and what are not. So each time you meet a new enemy, you don't know what its weaknesses are and all of them have their vulnerabilities. So you could attack with an axe and nothing happens apart from regular damage. However, next turn, maybe you do an ice magic attack. Suddenly there is an ice symbol under the enemy and when you look at your ice attack now, when the enemy is selected, it has the words weak written there. Letting you know that, hey, remember that time you attacked this specific enemy and it was super effective? It was with this. <laughs> the game will always remember these discoveries and when you fight enemies you have already challenged a few times before, you will know exactly what moves work and what don't. This feature, once again, encourages you to attack in as many different ways as possible to suss out their weaknesses and you are rewarded with the permanent knowledge. So, as any good turn-based RPG has, you have your limit break, or as it's known in this game, your overdrive gorge that builds up slowly during battle and lets you unleash a powerful move. A full overdrive lets you do a united attack, where you attack with one of your other party members and I'm sure as the game progresses, that upgrades to everyone attacking instead of just two. It's a fun staple in these types of games, and I'm glad it makes a return. It's basically your power up move, you got hit too many times, and now you get to do a big old hard attack on the enemy. An interesting choice is after every battle, all party members get all of their health back. Just health though. You won't get your battle points back for the special moves. Doesn't work out bad to be honest. I thought it might cause a problem making the game too easy with all your characters just completely healing after each battle, but uh, no, no, it didn't seem to be a problem, at least not as far as the demo is concerned. Another unique feature is called Battle Formations, where on a square grid, you decide where all members stand and different areas have different benefits. At the back is safer, less damage received and you are struck less often, but you do less damage. If you're up front, the exact opposite and so forth. I'm sure as the game gets harder and especially during difficult boss fights, we will all stop ignoring this feature and put everyone in their perfect spots to give us more of a fighting chance. Alrighty, let's talk about Smexy graphics and this colourful world that you just know it will be an absolute joy to get lost in. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the halfway point of this fun video. So my quick usual reminder that I appreciate you for watching. And if you believe that video games are about escapism and not activism, please, please hit the subscribe button now to empower voices like mine. Thanks for hearing me out. Really want to geek out over the visuals now. Alrighty dighty then, we established this game is old school goodness in terms of gameplay. While we're adding plenty of new things, but now it's time to treat our eyes. And this game is a bit of a looker. Rocking the anime style, this game is filled with colour. Character models look really nice and objects in the environment are also detailed. There is a nice soft depth of field going on, creating a nice little blur in the distance and regardless of it, if you are inside the gorgeous castle filled with detail or out in nature feeling like a kid having a great time, everything is really pleasing. The enemy designs also deserve a special shout out. It's great that each time you enter a new area, you are immediately greeted with many different monster types and their designs and different colors are everywhere. A lot of creativity has clearly gone into these designs and makes exploring even more exciting. They are not these ugly monsters you just have to deal with, but you wonder what will, what will you come across next? You know what else is not ugly? All of the characters. Man or woman, they are as daring and bold and sexy, dare I say, as they want to be. So you don't need to worry if this game is modern audience geared with unwanted changes. 
It's a game which is allowed to be a game. Amazing stuff, who would have thought? Right down to treasure chests glowing with all the sparkles, even that makes me happy. I just need to find a floating cooked chicken, Streets of Rage style, and I think I'm set. <laughs> I won't reveal anything about the story so far, but just know that all the usual beats to what makes a great story, it's showing itself here. And it seems to be as mature as it is classical and beautiful, I just don't want to spoil anything. I think we're in with something special here. What's so exciting about these types of games is they are full of so much value and really look after gamers. It has not given up on turn-based combat, but it also innovates it. It hasn't moved away from turn-based to give you a cheaper, more accessible experience that's just action combat, spam the following buttons. They are brave, they are sticking to the traditional turn-based combat, but they know they can innovate on it further, and they have. If you start to really enjoy this game, and you're about 10 to 15 hours in, you don't need to worry if the adventure is about to finish. You can fall in love with the game and its world and play unrestricted. Without fear, it will be done the first day you have it or over the weekend. These sort of games also have an insane amount of replay value, as you're going to be much more smart the second time and even third time through playing the game. There are also the three normal uh, difficulty settings as well. Play the game as you like. You want an easy run, go for the easier one. You want punishment, choose the punishment. I went for the middle option for the demo, so normal mode. The only area I was just a little bit disappointed in, and this is a very small critique, mind you, because Dragon Quest XI <laughs> spoiled me. When you have your enemy encounters and it goes to the battle screen, normally the battle screen environment is somewhere nearby. So if you're in a haunted house, let's just say, and a battle breaks out, then the environment correctly shows that you're in the haunted house. Each battle does not transport you to the exact position which the battle encounter happens. So in Dragon Quest XI, for example, if you are running on the beach and there is an enemy that, that's just in the water, right? Like it's just ankle deep in the water and then you go and you have that encounter in Dragon Quest XI. When you fight that monster, you will be in that exact same spot. So your character's feet will be in the water. It won't be on a random position on the beach and then all encounters are in that predefined area. It's in that specific spot. So that's literally the only bad I can say about this game. I had to get creative even coming up with a critique because otherwise there was no red flags, there was nothing wrong with this. It was just a delight to enjoy and I completed the demo and there's just a lot going on. It's very nice. There's a lot of small details as well. When I was exploring the town and I was running around, I even enjoyed looking at the graphics outside of the town shop. You know, it had these, uh, these little flasks and these little gems and things pop out a little bit. And just, it, it feels like it's filled with love, right? Because one thing which, oh, how silly of me. I actually forgot to mention this. This, <laughs> I can't believe I, I can't believe I didn't mention this already. This is a full 3D remake of a 1993 game. Oh my goodness, how did, how did I not include that? I had it in my notes, but I didn't have it in the script. That is really <laughs> silly, yes. This is based off a game that came out in 1993, but this is a full 3D remake of it. And from what I've seen personally and what I've read online, they have been incredibly respectful to the source material. So those who played this in 1993, in all of its pixel form, you're getting the full 3D take on it with modern 3D graphics as well. It looks absolutely gorgeous. This feels like one of those classical adventures you can get lost in for countless hours and escape to simpler times. I'll be getting this game for sure. And I'm so lucky and blessed to have already found my next obsession after Dragon Quest XI. See you smexy ladies and gentlemen next time, and thank you to everyone who subscribed while watching this video. Channel growth has been insane lately, and it's been a pleasure connecting with you all. Okay, bye bye for now.